you had a, a different path than, than a lot. Not just being undrafted, but being undrafted in a year with a lockout. I mean, it kind of left you hanging. That make you did it change your appreciation for getting there? Man, uh, no, nah, not really, not not really. You know, I've always been humble, and uh, you know, I've always been appreciative of everything I've gotten from the scholarship to Arkansas State to everything that happened here. You know, I, I appreciate everything that goes on in my life. You know, and I never regret it or anything like that. Just take it for what it is every day. Uh, you know, a lot of times they'll say, and you and I actually talked about this in Mobile. A lot of times they say, well, if you're going to be a seventh-round pick, sometimes you're better off going undrafted. But that really wasn't the case <laughs> this, this year in a lockout year. Oh, uh, no. Nah. If, you, if you were drafted, you know, ain't nothing like security. <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, you know, all the draft guys were knew, you know, what their fate was going to be, where they was going to be, you know, at the end of the day, whenever the lockout was going to be over with. You know, draft was in April, so, you know, and we didn't come back to July. So it was, it was just crazy dealing with that, you know what I'm saying, and – just not knowing if you're going to have a chance, you know, because you weren't able to talk to anybody. They were just, whenever the lockout ended, they was going to call you. So I made sure that I was in shape and, and I, I was prepared to, to go to camp. You, you've talked a little bit about that. Keep going. I mean, what, what do you do in that time? I mean, again, you, you still, it's, it's almost kind of like the time before the draft, I guess, just stretches out three more months. Man, it was, it was, that, that was probably one of the hardest times, you know, in my life right there, you know. Uh, you know, it's hard going through a lockout, you know, family situations going on around, you know, you don't know if you're going to even have an opportunity, you know, uh, maybe they'll call you, maybe they don't call you, you know, and uh, just dealing with that factor of not being called, maybe that, that, that was rough, you know, and not, I wasn't at school anymore, you know, uh, I had to go home, I was pushing, pushing tables and, and desks in my high school, uh, in my high school, painting walls, that's, you know, I had to, do something to make money, I had to do that and make sure I trained every night. So it was definitely humbling even more, you know. And uh, like I said, I guess I really do appreciate it more, thinking about it. Then you get, you know, to the tail of the camp. I mean, you can kind of see making the team right there. And then the little, you know, kind of little talk about that and how things end up going from the end of training camp to kind of ending up back in Baltimore. Yeah, um, as slow as it was, the lockout was. I mean, once it started, <laughs> I was gone. They called me that night. The next day, I was gone. I flew out to Baltimore, and then, man, things zipped by. You know, first day I got there, I had to run a conditioning test. You know, and uh, definitely had to persevere through a lot. You know, 90 guys in camp, and you got three weeks to show them what you got was just rough in itself. So, you know, I, I knew that if I was going to make it, I had to go in and give them my best. At the end of the day, that's all you can do. And like I said, that last, that last week was a little – a little gut wrenching, but I knew that if I went out and did my best, everything else could take care of itself. So, kind of talk about you know, kind of where you were with the team last year and, and what you do kind of over the course of the season last year. Yeah, last year I uh, didn't quite make the 53, but uh, they, they liked me enough to bring me in for the rest of the year and develop me as a practice player, practice squad player. So, for the season, basically, I gave all the looks and just learned the defense even more. Like I said, it was rough on itself just to come in and learn a playbook in three weeks on one of the best teams in the NFL already that's already loaded with star-studded talent at each level, you know, and um, they saw something in me to keep me around, you know, not only last year but this year too. So um, I must have did something right. I'm still around. <laughs> so, so now what? After you're on the practice squad, is it the same deal? You kind of go back and, and, and camp and it's – same thing, just trying to get well, yeah, it just it just starts over. Each year is its own year. It's all, all years are unique. You know, a lot of guys see guys on a team. They think that those teams are the same. Those teams aren't the same. Each year, there's guys leaving. There's guys going. You know, we just lost two defensive starters on us. Like I said, a star-studded team. You know, you lose two guys like that, big guys. You know, we lost uh, both our backup safeties. You know, and uh, this year, you know, opportunities are going to be there. You know, we lost two defensive linemen. You know, so, you know, whatever they do in the draft, you know, it's cool with me, the free agency. But at the end of the day, like I said, it all starts back over. And you got to go in there and make the team. Is there a – you have to have a swagger to be a defender on the Baltimore Ravens, <laughs> even on the practice squad? Oh, uh, yeah, man. I mean, at the end of the day, like practice squad, you know, it's, it's practice squad, but we're all it's one big team. That's one thing that I love about the, the 
the whole organization itself, you know. You know, Ray Lewis, you know, sees me as a defender on the team, you know. It's not like a guy's on practice squad or anything like that. It was, you know, you're the defender on the team, you know. By the end of the year, I was the only one, I was the only guy on the practice squad that was on defense because that's how much pride we take in our defense, you know. And uh, they taught me, you know, when you walk in, you'll see a sign that says, play like a Raven. And in that self, it's just built in what, it, what everything you need, you know. That's why I got along. Like I said, to be one of the top defenses year in, year out is amazing. You were mobile, so I know you kept up. I mean, what was it like oh, yeah. after watching that year last year? Man, that's, I mean, that, it's amazing. You know, uh, I really appreciated it and uh, loved it even more because I was a year removed from it. Those guys that, you know, DeMario's, you know, he came in a year after me and I got a, like, got a lot of close relationships with a lot of these guys. You know, Dorvis Woods, you know, on the defensive line, Brandon Joyner, all those guys are like my little brothers. And to see what they did with this program once I left is just amazing. Called out a couple of guys that you know this time next week, we'll be waiting to see if their names called. What what would you what would you tell them? You've been in their shoes. What are you going to tell them about what not only next week but the next year of their life will be like? Man, I just tell them, man, embrace it. You know, don't shy away from it. Don't worry about anything. Just embrace the moment. You know, because NFL stands for not for long. You know, what I'm saying you don't know when your time's going to be coming to an end in it. So while you're there, enjoy it and maximize every day of it. How did uh, I ask Alice this question? You too. I mean, how did how did Arkansas State get you ready for the next level there? Man, um, one thing that that you know with Kevin Peoples, my defensive line coach here, up until my senior year, you know, he did a great job preparing me, and uh, Coach Roberts did a great job embracing school. You know, making sure that you always had that as a backup plan. You know, so I was always prepared. Even with the NFL, without the NFL, I would be successful in life. And that's one thing I definitely learned here. But uh, as far as football, like I said, Coach Peoples did an awesome job with me. It got me prepared with techniques and stuff that I'm using now that I was taught four years ago that just kept me at a, an advantage at a lot of guys because a lot of guys don't become complete D linemen until they get to the NFL. And Arkansas State helped me become a complete D lineman before I left here. So what would your message be to, let's see, you're, I mean, let's say you're a kid that, Name the kids here. Let's say a guy that just signed here and thinking, well, gosh, I, you know, I didn't sign in the SEC, so I'm not going to make it to the league. I mean, what, what would you tell those guys? <laughs> Go back and look at the last year's squad. You know what I'm saying? Uh, winning breeds a lot of success. You know, and um, last year alone will set Arkansas State apart from a lot of schools and from now on. This isn't just a Sun Belt school anymore. You, you, once you win 10 games, you're setting yourself apart in the nation, and like I said, uh, it's only you can only go up from here. Now we got a great coach in, the, you know, now, and like I said, if NFL finds everybody, as long as you're working hard and you're capable and showing yourself that you're worthy of being in the NFL, because like I said, it's a, it's it's not a right. You don't, you know, you got to go and work for it. You know, so always work hard and everything else take care of itself.